Good evening, everybody. I am Dr. Prasanna Kumar, endocrinologist from Bengaluru. Today we are discussing the module five, that is diabetes complication. Now this is my conflict of interest. This is my disclaimer. Now what are we going to learn in this module? What are the diabetes complication? What are the micro and macrovascular complication like nephropathy, neuropathy, and retinopathy? Now the agenda is to see burden of diabetes, different complication as I told you, and finally I'm going to summarize. As you know, burden of diabetes is not just diabetes, it is the burden of micro and macrovascular complication. With each complication increasing, the cost of diabetes increases, as well as the quality and quantity of life also reduces. That's why the diabetes complications are very important, and younger the patient, longer they live, the chances of complication is more. As you know, the diabetes occurs one to two decades earlier in developing countries compared to developed countries. That's why as they get diabetes younger, they are more likely to get complication of two or three or four decades. Early intensive therapy of diabetes to control diabetes and achieve glycemia will reduce the complication. That should be our goal. <clears throat> as you know, the two important complications of diabetes are, apart from metabolic complication, macrovascular complication, and microvascular complication. Macrovascular complication are coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, and peripheral arterial disease. Microvascular complications are nephropathy, neuropathy, as well as retinopathy. If you look at bridges, that means in between the atomic neuropathy and other complications are microalbuminuria which is early stage of nephropathy, erectile dysfunction, cardiac neuropathy, and autonomic neuropathy. So these are all the, the autonomic neuropathy as such, including microalbuminuria. As you know, microalbuminuria is also a marker of coronary artery diseases as such. So let us come to the macrovascular complication. As you know, that around one-tenth of people with even pre-diabetes, even before diabetes develops, the vascular complication of diabetes is there. So the prevalence of vascular complication in pre-diabetes is almost like newly detected diabetes. As you know, there are three stages, normoglycemia or euglycemia, pre-diabetes and diabetes. So even from this stage of pre-diabetes, the vascular complication stuff. There were studies in the past to show five to seven years before the onset of diabetes, changes in the macrovascular as such happens leading to complication. So the prevalence of vascular complication in pre-diabetes is almost one half of what you see in the overt diabetes. That is why intense glucose control is very important. But you should remember, microvascular complications are pathognomonic of diabetes, whereas macrovascular complication can occur not only due to diabetes, but other factors like dyslipidemia, obesity, smoking, hypertension. Diabetes contributes only about 16% to the coronary artery disease. It is not 100% like others. So the macrovascular complication in diabetes are, if you look at uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes is one of the factors which contribute to it. As the age advances, complications are more. Gender factors, as you know, men have more cardiovascular disease than women. Ethnicity, the Asians have more cardiovascular complications than Caucasian. High blood pressure, obesity, lack of physical activity, smoking, all of them contribute to it. If you can see here, out of these eight factors, diabetes is on low one, uh, contribute about 15 to 60%. So also, when there is obesity, that can lead to hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol, including cancer risk is more common in people who are obese. And of course, most disorders, depression is more common, people who are obese. And of course, obesity is also the cause of heart diseases, reproductive disorders like erectile dysfunction, liver disease, as you know, fatty liver is also part of it. So including diabetes, hypertension, liver disease, dyslipidemia, these are all the eight things which are consequence of obesity. Obesity is not a disease, but is the mother of all these diseases I can see. That is why reducing weight is a very important step in all the patients as such. Again, if you see what are the factors which prevent microvascular complication. First, tight glycemic control. If the patient is diabetic, 
see the diabetes control is good. If we achieve the A1C around seven, it is good. Very important. You can just take medicines and reduce the blood sugar, but if you have lifestyle modification, not only it reduces the blood sugar, reduces obesity, reduces cardiovascular risk. Pharmacological intervention targeting type two diabetes should be associated with dyslipidemia hypertension. It's equally important to control cholesterol and hypertension, not just glucocentric like controlling the diabetes such. What is the glucose paradox? The glucose paradox is tardiness of therapeutic intervention. That means there is a so-called as tardiness or hesitancy on the part of patients as well as doctors. Adverse cardiovascular effects of the anti-diabetic drug. You know, there are some anti-diabetic like, you know, which in the past, rosiglitzone was banned because it caused heart failure. Contribution to macrovascular disease of factors unrelated to glycemia, I already told you, are cholesterol, obesity, and inflammation. Inflammation is also a cause. What we call tardiness is inertia. The inertia can be two types, the physician's inertia or a patient inertia. When you ask them to increase their dose, they may not. When you diet, exercise, and medication, they say they may not take 100%. And doctors are also scared to increase their dose. Patients will, why are you increasing the dose? Or when you said that you should be on insulin, diabetes is not controlled. Patients say, no, give me three months, six months, I can control on diabetes. So the therapeutic inertia is there, both from the point of view of the physician as well as the patient. What are the non-pharmacological approaches that sensible sustenance, structured physical activity, a diabetic should at least have 30 minutes of exercise per day or 150 minutes per week as such. Even if you do exercise or walking 30 minutes per day, per five days is good enough. If you want to improve the cardiovascular risk to be reduced, then better to at least four to five hours of exercise per week. Most important stress management because stress also leads to hypertension, worsening of diabetes, ischemic heart disease. Sleep hygiene, very important. People who are on night duty, like BPO and all, have more chance of diabetes because in the night, they'll be working. When you are working, you continue to eat and they sleep when all of us are supposed to be awake. That is why sleep hygiene. Every healthy person should get at least six to eight hours of good sleep. Then substance abuse cessation, whether it is drug or tobacco or excess of alcohol, all these should be avoided. These are the five steps, non-pharmacological approach that sensible sustenance, structured physical activity, 150 minutes per week of exercise, stress management, sleep hygiene, and substance abuse, cessation. These are very important. If you look at pharmacological one, first is to overcome obesity. Previously, we had so many drugs to reduce weight, but unfortunately, we don't have any drugs today to reduce weight. It's only drugs for diabetes which reduces weight. Then you even seek control. Wherever possible, try to bring the HbA1c to around seven. If possible, even 6.5 also is achievable, provided you don't achieve hypoglycemia. So without hypoglycemia, if you can achieve A1C 6.5, that is better than seven. Good blood pressure control. Previously, they said 140, 90. Now they say, no, if you can achieve 130, 80, that is better than 140, 90 also. Cholesterol control, irrespective of the target. Either you have a target, that total cholesterol below 200, and LDL below 100. But if we can achieve LDL below 70 for diabetic, it is better than 100. Or even if you cannot do estimate your lipid profile, every diabetic after 40 years, please give him statin, whether 10 to 20 milligrams in a moderate risk or 20 to 60 milligram in a high risk. And most important, endothelial platelet health is the patient has high cardiovascular risk, family history of heart disease, smoking, obesity, you can use antiplatelet drug like aspirin as well as the uh, clopidogrel and all. Choice of therapy. Of course, choice of diabetes therapy is insulin and sulfonylureas are less promising for limiting cardiovascular complications. There are some studies which have shown that sulfonylurea increases cardiovascular risk. There are other studies where it's not a high risk. Thysosaldins hold good promise as insulin sensitizers and may offer cardiovascular benefit because it also lowers the repeat. Statins, fibrates, and agents that disrupt angiotensin to signaling can reduce macrovascular events as that, that is ACE inhibitors 
are also useful in preventing heart diseases. Aspirin taught us the prothrombin state. Recently, there is a paper which said you don't have to do in every diabetic for primary prevention. Secondary prevention, yes. Primary prevention, only those selected patients you can. So it is not that aspirin for all patients like we are using in the past. Very important, treat cholesterol and control hypertension. Try to bring it to 130 by 80. It's about macrovascular complication. Regarding microvascular complications, sequelae of diabetes and uncontrolled hyperglycemia. As I told you, nephropathy when kidneys are involved, neuropathy when peripheral nerve is involved, and retinopathy when the fundus is involved. It is time to develop faster and more common than microvascular complication. That's why usually by 10 to 15 years of diabetes uncontrolled, they can develop these things. Neuropathy as such is related to duration of diabetes. There are two types of neuropathy, acute metabolic neuropathy, when the patient comes with 400, 500, that sugar, as soon as you control diabetes, neuropathy, tingling, numbness, burning, disappears. Other one is chronic neuropathy, bilateral symmetrical neuropathy, when diabetes is 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. By 10 years, nearly 80% are neuropathy. By 20 years, 90% will have neuropathy as such. So we had a trial known as landmark trial. It was two years study involving more than 30,000 patients, both in the metro and non-metro cities. At the end of one year, microvascular complications were significantly higher in individuals from Indian non-metropolitan cities than metropolitan cities. Neuropathy, as I told you, was the most common microvascular complication in both metropolitan and non-metropolitan cities. We have published seven to eight papers on this you'll be seeing that including the EST. What are the predictors of microvascular complication? One, increasing age. As the age advances, you know, nephropathy, retinopathy, neuropathy is likely to occur. Neuropathy can occur in patients without diabetes also at the age of 80, 90, because sensation will come down. As I told you already, longer the duration of diabetes, more neuropathy as such. Comorbid conditions. Then if you have hypertension, and blood pressure and diabetes, the chance of microvascular complications are much more. So if you look at retinopathy, nephropathy, if you have all the three, diabetes, hypertension, and dyslipidemia, then you see the chances of the microvascular complications are high. Non-adherence to diet, because if there is B12 deficiency, that can also lead to neuropathy as well. So if you see the diabetic microvascular, they are highly susceptible to damage due to chronic hyperglycemia and genetic predisposition. We know definitely nephropathy is a genetic predisposition. We have done some of these studies in the SNP passage. We found there are certain families where majority of them get nephropathy. There are families where they don't get much nephropathy. There are patients in families where they get retinopathy. So there may be a genetic predisposition, but we can't change the genes. At least controlling diabetes well, we can prevent or postpone microvascular complications. Complications of essential organs like kidney, eyes, and nervous system is microvascular complication. Eligible to develop disability, accelerate mortality, fail to avail work on a regular basis due to illness. That's why it is important to control diabetes and prevent microvascular complications. If you look at overview of the major areas contributing that, there is a hemodynamic factor like hypertension and salt and fluid imbalance. Then metabolic factors like lipids and glycemia. Genetic factors like susceptibility and gene expression, whether it is the chromosome, then genes, then whether it is SNPs. And you also see proteomics, which can identify this patient. And because of hemodynamic, metabolic, genetic predisposition or uncontrolled metabolic factors, hypertension and all, Cellular damage occurs, gene modulation, gene modification. This is known as epigenetics. Epigenetics is even the environment, whether in mother's utero or whether in the infancy, that the genes can change. And by many of these mechanisms, methylations and all, and you can see epigenetics happens, and energetics and protein expression. Through protein expression modification, immune system is recruited then cellular dysfunction death. This is known as apoptosis. That's how, whether it is inflammation, genetic predisposition, hemodynamic changes, hypertension, or poor control of diabetes, 
all of them lead to the apoptosis apoptosis is self controlled cell death that is why quality and quantity of life will come down if we do not control the diabetes and hemodynamic factors genes we cannot change in these patients and such then coming to interaction among glucose homeostasis pathways then homeostatic pathways and target cells susceptible to diabetes complications target cells include endothelial cells that is inner line of vascular cells as such then podocytes podocytes are there in the kidney and also in the retina and if these podocytes which are covering up the gap if they shrink then there is a leak of protein and fluid in the retina and kidney leading to microvascular complication and microalbuminuria very important proximal tubular cells and muller cells cardiomyocytes in the heart neuronal cells in the brain that means the changes that occur in these target cells like i told you endothelial cells podocytes and then proximal tubular cells and muller cells and the cardiomyocytes and neuronal cells that leads to complications whether in the kidney or in the liver or whether it is in the muscle as such that is how the whole mechanism of complications of diabetes is through this mechanism where the podocytes as well as the endothelial cells are target responsible for these complication as such as you can see then as i told you what are the three common microvascular complication and how do you detect it nephropathy earliest to detect nephropathy is using urine sticks suppose urine sticks is positive that is macroproteinuria whereas there are different methods where even the microalbuminuria that is between 30 to 300 mg can be detected by microalbuminuria you can check 24 hours urine collection or even stat sample simple strips are available neuropathy monofilament testing you have seen monofilament and when you apply to the foot and if the sensation of pressure is less you can make out that there is neuropathy retinopathy is dilated eye examination by fundus photography and you can use intravenous fluorescence angiography which is not necessary these days optical coherence imaging can be done i'll show you how artificial intelligence using the non mediatic camera you can screen all your patients in the clinic for retinopathy then we come to medical nutrition therapy exercise smoking cessation please ask patient what is the diet that he is following how much of exercise is doing is he smoking don't ask him to reduce people who say reduce will never do it ask him stop smoking from today itself not even one cigarette per day per week or per month if they say will reduce 10 to 5 5 to 4 it will never happen ask them to exercise 30 minutes per day 5 days a week if you have a dietitian or a nutritionist please send your patient to nutritionist she will suggest medical nutrition therapy if you don't have you can refer to a qualified and competent and experienced nutrition expert of course intensive therapy is the goal for it anti hypertensive medications like ace inhibitors in all diabetics ace inhibitors crbs are the first line of drugs to be used because it protects both the heart and kidney beta blockers are the second line because they also protect the heart depending on the situation you can use one of them then how can healthcare providers help in managing microvascular complication every complication prevention has three types primary prevention secondary prevention tertiary prevention primary prevention is preventing disease itself so if you check everybody non diabetic or healthy person as soon as you detect diabetes and see that they are treated this is called primary prevention secondary prevention is already known diabetic medication in elderly individuals with locked down complication and controlled diabetes so that they don't get retinopathy nephropathy peripheral neuritis macrovascular disease heart attack stroke tertiary is she has already developed the complication early detectment and management of these things this is how detect primary secondary and tertiary actually tertiary care is only rehabilitation we should be definitely at the level of primary prevention if he is already diabetic secondary prevention of micron macrovascular complication as i told you this is known as renal pentard always just don't look at urea creatinine egf for it estimated glomerular filtration rate albuminuria i told you you can detect micro or macro then look at the chronic health conditions like bone health 
and iron studies do they have anemia treat anemia comorbid condition i have been emphasizing please check blood pressure every visit estimate lipids every year and good diabetes control hba1c should be nearer to 7 as possible and you should avoid hypoglycemia because many time hypoglycemia can lead to cardiovascular disease as such and very important every year or every 6 months check electrolytes sodium potassium and if potassium is high you have to bring it down sometimes ac inhibitors can cause and if the sodium is very low especially elderly patient they complain weakness suddenly the potassium sodium may be 120 125 treat them with sodium they will improve dramatically urinary tract infection obstruction elderly men have the prostate enlargement look for that and examine the urine for any cast any pustules if it is they treat properly so by doing this renal pen tod you can see that every patient is investigated for all that and treat their diabetes well also look for urinary infection electrolyte imbalance hba1c lipids blood pressure bone health anemia then very important every 6 months you estimate egfr you know normally egfr is 90 to 120 then albuminuria then normal albuminuria microalbuminuria then macroalbuminuria which is more than 300 or so per day then how to screen the simple thing is annual assessment in every patient with type 2 irrespective of the treatment urinary albumin and the estimated egfr don't take only creatinine urea in patient with diabetes if urinary albumin is more than 300 mg per gram of creatinine on estimated gfr 30 to 60 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter should be monitored twice a year diagnosis is based on albuminuria reduced egfr if it is less than 90 then you so it's an early stage of chronic kidney disease less than 60 stage 2 less than 30 stage 3 then you lent it end up with dialysis transplantation that's why you must estimate the egfr in the absence of any other primary cause of renal damage many time patient is only 3 years diabetic and he develop nephropathy then you refer to nephrologist and nephro when the egfr is less than 90 don't wait till creatinine 4 5 6 if the creatinine is more than 1.4 or easy of far less than 90 please refer to nephrologist he will see and they said oh this may be something other than diabetes because diabetes is only 5 years usually kidney disease eye disease occurs 15 to 20 years of diabetes if something occurs less than 10 years the nephrologist will do biopsy and decide it may be some other treatable causes like immune problems active urinary sediment like pustules and others and even cast rapidly increasing albuminuria nephrotic syndrome rapidly decreasing egfr or absence of retinopathy suggest alternative additional cause usually there is a concordance between retinopathy and nephropathy whatever amount of damage of the eye same amount of kidney will be damaged somebody has got a retinopathy but no microalbuminuria somebody has renal failure but fundus is normal so if there is a discordance between the retinopathy and nephropathy you must refer him to ophthalmologist and nephrologist to examine properly and find out causes other than diabetes then refer to nephrologist for further diagnosis as i said for kidney biopsy this is what i was trying to tell you in your clinic is almost the size of your palm which needs to uh, double a cells as such then you can just insert this tip with that tip you can measure in the urine glucose protein bilirubin urobilinogen ph ketones nitrates leukocyte creatinine albumin all these parameters can be measured with one stick insert it it will show all that it's a highly reliable test results with creatinine composition <coughs> even with a spot urine you can do because lot of people are not willing to collect 24 hour urine as such and it is very cumbersome now this is a simple chart it may look complicated on one axis you have got what is known as gfr whether gfr i told you more than 90 normal 60 to 90 45 to 60 30 to 45 15 to 30 and less than 15 so this is how you can see grade 1 2 3 4 5 5 gradings of the category as such on the other side you have got albuminuria normal to mildly increased albuminuria 
moderate to increased severe. So if you look at all this, if the patient has grade three albuminuria with kidney failure, that is less than 15, you should refer. So also if you have got the A1 as well as the E1, the between 30 and down. Again, if you see if it is more than the less than 50 and he has got albuminuria, you must refer even grade three albuminuria when it is two plus or three plus more than 500 milligram, even though the EGFR is 45 to 60, that is the stage you should refer. Otherwise, in these stages, you can follow up control diabetes blood pressure. Well, that's how with this chart, you will know red means refer to the nephrologist. Green means you can manage his diabetes. Whether it is light, yellow, and others, you can decide how to refer the patient to nephrologist. So prevention of progression of renal disease in patients with diabetes, as I told you, is primary prevention, diabetes mellitus, good lysemic control, use ACE inhibitor in every patient, and they have albuminuria and blood pressure control. Then they go to the stage of microalbuminuria, continue this treatment, it becomes secondary. Then if they already develop nephropathy and end-stage renal disease, it's only tertiary prevention, that is rehabilitation, nothing but dialysis and down. So how to pay, treat patients with nephropathy? You have to reduce cardiovascular. One, treat lipids very vigorously. Treat hypertension vigorously. If we can achieve 120-80 in a diabetic with nephropathy, that is better than 140-90. Good blood pressure control, good diabetes control, A1C below 7, and using ACE inhibitors, CRB, can prevent further nephropathy. Nowadays, you can add to it SGL2 inhibitors. If there are no contraindications, using SGL2 inhibitors can also slow down the progression of nephropathy. Also helps in the cardiovascular risk reduction and even heart failure as well. So target A1C below 7, consider SGL2 inhibitors in patient with EGFR up to 30 because below 30, it is not approved. Anything between 90, even up to 30, that is ml per minute per 1.73 square meters or albumin more than 30. Even if creatinine is normal, is the uh, albumin in the urine is more than 300 milligrams per gram of creatinine, you can definitely use. And nowadays, we don't just achieve less than 140, 90. 130, 80 is better than because every two millimeters of increase in blood pressure increases the risk of retinopathy and nephropathy. Of course, RAS blocking, as you told you, angiotensin, two inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers can be used. When to refer, I have already told you, when there is high risk in the patient, any discordant between nephropathy and retinopathy and less duration of diabetes, he develop nephropathy. There may be other cause of the nephropathy rather than diabetes refer to nephrologies for a biopsy. Neuropathy, now diabetic neuropathy is is a diagnosis of explosion because when somebody comes with neuropathy, it could be malnutrition, B12 deficiency, it could be toxic substances, it could be diabetes, so many other things. So I have to include all other things in nephropathy as such, including Hansen's disease as such. And 50% may be symptomatic, other 50% may not symptom. Recognition treatment of autonomic neuropathy because there are various methods to detect the autonomic neuropathy by doing ECG and then taking an ECG, looking at RR variability, and also asking the patient to lie down three minutes, check BP, ask him to stand for three minutes, check BP, orthostatic hypotension. So these are all many methods of detecting the autonomic neuropathy, and you can improve that by good diabetes control. So distal symmetrical paraneuropathy. This is one thing, pathognomonic of diabetes research. All patients should be assessed for diabetic peripheral neuropathy right from the day one you have diagnosed. Annually after examination, history taking, pin prick, vibration sense with a tuning force of 128 hertz. You can use the tuning port and see whether he has touch, temperature, pin prick, and other sensation. Annual 10 gram monofilament, I showed you. If you use a monofilament and then with a pressure, you can make out whether it's a high risk for ulcer or even amputation if those sensation last. This is a simple equipment, NeuroTouch. In one thing we can see, this is a monofilament. You can also check touch. You can also see temperature. 
you can also find all this can be done with one app known as neurotouch app this is how the report comes about sensation temperature and others and diagnosis of neuropathy is by diabetic autonomic neuropathy cardiac autonomic neuropathy as i told you by ecg gastrointestinal neuropathy most often by either cumbersome test or simply they say i got regurgitation bloating sensation urinary disturbances suppose there is a problem of passing urine hesitancy and the neurogenic bladder overflowing or he has got other problem like dysuria can be due to autonomic neuropathy even if he has got something like erectile dysfunction is also a neuropathy in them the management is optimized glucose control to reduce the progression assess and treat patient to reduce pain related peripheral neuropathy there are various treatment available like pregabalin digloxide gabapentin are recommended and this is how it goes that is once you have diabetes patient with neuropathic pain then you can optimize the glycemic control first thing is control well sometimes though it is well controlled neuropathy if you change over to insulin for three months neuropathy reduces if they don't reduce symptomatic treatment by not reptilin mood elevators amitriptyline is also a mood elevator then carbamazepine anti epileptic drug or you can use gabapentin pregabalin pregabalin is given between 75 to 150 mg though abroad they use up to 300 mg most of our patients are comfortable 75 to 150 because if you use higher dose they feel very drowsy giddiness and all gabapentin can be given 100 mg three times a day and combination drug whether it is not triptyline amitriptyline carbamazole with the pregabalin or the gabapentin you can also add duloxetine and valaxafine these are all again drugs which will increase the blood flow you can also use the painkillers like tramadol and sometimes the counter irritant capsaicin and lignocaine most of the ointment what you see are gel which are applied as if it very mild they can be all right with this the counter irritant acts by stimulating the receptor so that the pain comes down like this starting from good diabetes control all these drugs are available you start one drug at second drug or three drugs nowadays there are combination of pregabalin not triptyline plus methylcobalamin because lot of patients on metformin have b12 deficiency especially vegetarians have more of b12 deficiency as well so diabetic foot is foot ulcers amputations are result of diabetic neuropathy and peripheral artery disease when somebody comes with a foot problem assess diabetes examine the foot is there any ulcer examine neuropathy feel for the artery surgery then early recognition treatment can delay prevention so you can have doppler in your set or you can do simple ankle brachial index check blood pressure at the brachial artery here check blood pressure when it is at the thigh also this is known as ankle brachial index if it is less than 0.7 there is a serious decrease in the blood supply refer him to vascular surgeon he will do doppler study in case nurse you will do angiogram if there is a block he may do angioplasty for the blood vessels in the lower limb or even bypass for that major cause of mortality morbid in people with diabetes as american diabetic association recommends comprehensive foot evaluation at least annually patient with evidence of sensory loss or prior ulceration amputation should have their feet feet inspected every visit sometimes pay okay doctor i am all right no no ask him to take out the shoes or chappal ask him to take out the socks examine the foot carefully look in between the toes many times there may be candidiasis and that infection spreads as they did look at the nails look at the hairs look at the shape because one of the earlier signs you see is ischemia is the hairs in the feet are lost the skin becomes shiny and thin and if it becomes black and examine for dorsalis pedis dorsalis pedis artery for the uh, pulse as such then these are all these things you can go up to femur artery look at the popliteal artery look at dorsalis pedis artery see whether the blood flow is all right or not prior history of ulceration amputation shear coat foot angioplasty vascular surgery very important ask do they have retinopathy renal disease smoking as i said the peripheral artery disease will become worse if the patient is smoking 
you pay as retinopathy and renal disease also. Ask him whether the symptoms of neuropathy or vascular disease. Most of these focus have burger disease, what is known as intermittent radication. Inspection, assess for deformity, neurological assessment, as I told you with a neuro touch. If you don't have this, then monofilament, touch, temperature, pain, pressure, you can check. What does EDA say? Whenever there is a diabetic food, you should have multidisciplinary approach. If you don't have all this, refer to a center where you run a diabetic food screening. Refer to food care specialist and general preventive food self-care. Use a specialist footwear. Nowadays, depending on the pressure they will do. There may be currents in that. Please palpate carefully in the foot. And if there is a current, refer to podiatrist to cut the nails properly and to scale this current as such. The microvascular complicated retinopathy is highly specific vascular complication of both type 1 and type 2. Strongly related, as I told you, duration of diabetes. Only 10, 15, 20 years you are likely to get, not very early. Most common cause of blindness among adults between 20 to 74. Don't look at only fundus because there are other things. Every diabetic look for glaucoma. If you have an applination tonometer, you can use it and measure. If anything more than 20, refer to a glaucoma specialist. Put a touch and then see whether it is iris shadow. You can make out early contact. And if you see there is a cataract, please refer him to a eye specialist. This is how individuals with a type 2 diabetes have initial dilated comprehensive exam. If you have got a ophthalmoscope, if you can check, please check. If you have time, and if the patient has an attendant, put drops and exam. If you don't have, please refer to ophthalmologist. He will not only look at vision, look at tension, and also look at retina. He can give a comprehensive check. Every one to two years, every diabetic should be examined by either ophthalmologist or so. Women with pre-existing diabetes should counsel for risk during pregnancy. Because during pregnancy, retinopathy may become Worse also, that's why please refer the patient to ophthalmologist for these things. This is what I have been using, Remedios camera, and this is camera with artificial intelligence. You can hand hold it like this, and it is hardly um, about one, one and a half kg. Fully handheld with optimal chin rest, one click mon montage feature, external fixation is possible. So you take a fundus photograph, you get a very clear normal fundus. You can see here the Fovea here and the discoptic disc here and fovea one peak. Suppose there is an abnormality, it will mark like this. Artificial intelligence says these are the area which are doubtful. In such situation, if you screen 100 patients, five or six show like this, refer them to ophthalmologist for a further evaluation. Suppose it says fundus normal, review after one year. Then how to manage? Stepped approach should be adapted to manage hyperglycemia. GLP-1 unlocks may be used, good control of diabetes and blood pressure and all. To summarize my talk, the long-term complications can present a diagnosis in people with type 2. We had a Cindy complication in newly detected diabetes. From Diabetes India, we produced back-to-back -back three papers showing that almost 3 to 5% of the patients, the first time when they visit with diabetes, they may have peripheral neuropathy. 1% of them may have retinopathy also. That is why at the beginning of all type 2 diabetes and after five years of type 1, you must investigate for microvascular complication fundus exam. Complication can lead to permanent neurological consequences or death. That's why recognizing early treating very important. Early detection, essential to prevent disability and death. Self-management of diabetes is important successfully preventing or delaying complications. Every patient of diabetes annually check for the microvascular complication, neuropathy, retinopathy, and nephropathy. Diabetes hypertension or a combination of both causes 80% of end stage in disease. Good diabetes control, good blood pressure control can prevent these complications. Both diabetes and chronic kidney disease are strongly associated with cardiovascular disease. So please try to control and reduce the cardiovascular risk. And achieving euglacemia is very important. Most effective strategy to reduce impact of kidney disease in diabetes are to prevent type 2 diabetes, to diagnose and treat kidney disease early, and living healthy with diabetes.
early diagnosis timely treatment of diabetic retinopathy can prevent uh, sight impairment or blindness optimize lose of control blood pressure control along with dyslipidemia and screening retinopathy every year can reduce this complication thank you for your hearing if there are any questions i will be happy to answer your question you can put it in the chat box and we'll answer your question as such thank you so much sir uh, for taking us through the diabetes complications part so uh, we have few the questions asked by our attendees the first question uh, has been asked by uh, dr jagdish is it compulsory that all diabetic patients and land up in one or the other complications in long term thank you dr jagdish for the question it is not necessary all diabetics will end up complication because even the patients you diagnose diabetes tell them you have type 1 not type 2 doctor i am afraid of the complication i heart kidney first thing is to assure if your diabetes is well controlled if you check annually control your blood pressure control your cholesterol control your diet and all you may never get complication the first patient type 1 diabetes i saw not even type 2 type 1 diabetes whom i have seen 1980 that means 41 years back he was 20 year old boy now he is 62 and he is already married having children grandchildren he worked as professor retired registrar he has no complication at all so neither retinopathy nor he has got nephropathy nor cardiovascular so we have to reassure everybody and it is true for type 2 i have got thousands of patients who are 60 70 80 even 90 they have 30 to 45 years diabetes last week one of my friend doctor radiologist who died He had diabetes for 50 years, and for 50 years, no retinopathy, no nephropathy. Please remember, diabetes complications are not a must. These are micro or microvascular complications. Of course, nephropathy can occur. It is not serious. It may be tingling, numbness, lack of sensation with footwear. You can manage, but retinopathy, nephropathy, cardiovascular disease, peripheral vascular disease are not essential or not mandatory if you control diabetes. one of the mantras control diabetes control blood pressure cholesterol well anybody coming to you regularly every 3 to 4 months will never get into this complication most often patient don't come to you for 5 years it does not turn up his hba1c7 goes to about 9 or 10 his sugar was 120 four years back when he saw now will come with 300 400 these are the patients who will get into problem those coming to you regularly regularly every year you are checking up eye heart kidney nerves they need not get any complication thank you dr jagdish this was a very useful question and you should also counsel the patient at the beginning of the disease itself and reassure them that if you control diabetes your quality and quantity of life will be as good as now thank you so much sir or uh, the next question we have from dr reni flip or uh, how to titrate the insulin dose in diabetic patients very good question there are two types of insulin you start if you are using a basal insulin you just monitor the fasting blood sugar let us say is fasting blood sugar 180 120 start with four units go on increasing two to four units every three to four days let us say his blood sugar is 180 you started with four units then after 5 days increase to 6 10 days 8 and maybe 12 days increase it to 14 units let us say with 14 units of basal insulin fasting blood sugar 180 has become 100 to 110 that is enough between 90 to 110 is a good control but it may not control post prandial suppose your patient is on pre mixed insulin then start with checking pre lunch blood sugar let us say his fasting is 180 post prandial 280 you start with 4 or 6 unit go on increasing to in its once in 2 or 3 days twice a week you will do fasting pre lunch go on increasing the dose till fasting is controlled and post prandial and on pre lunch is controlled fasting is 140 but before lunch is 110 you can't increase the dose for that because he may get into low sugar so once you see fasting is high but pre lunch is well controlled start another 2 or 4 units in the night so four or six units in the night what is 140 160 comes to 100 pre lunch consumed by 110 that is how when you do basal insulin 
you monitor once in three, four days, only fasting. When they are using pre-mix, you can check both fasting and pre-lunch and go on increasing the dose with pre-lunch. Pre-lunch means before lunch, one o'clock sugar is 100 or 120. The dose is all right in the morning. Still fasting is high. A small dose of pre-mix insulin in the night. That will control the fasting blood sugar. This is how you start with four or six units, titrate it, control fasting and postpartial. We don't do postpartial, we do pre-lunch. If still you want further, check fasting, pre-lunch, pre-dinner. If everything is 90 to 120, whether you use one dose of basal, two dose of premix, or three dose of insulin, that means you have achieved a good blood sugar control. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question we have from Dr. Krishnamurti. Uh, hmm. Is diabetic neuropathy reversible? Yeah, Dr. Krishnamurti, yes, it is reversible because you should remember, as I told you initially, when the blood sugar is 300, 400, because of metabolic decompensation, the nerves are affected. And if you bring down blood sugar 400, 300, 200, 100, within six to eight weeks, the neuropathy is gone. Sensations are good, no burning at all. The next thing is chronic neuropathy. It depends what stage is it. Suppose they have burning or anything, that sensation can be reduced, as I said, mood elevator, not triptolyte, or carbamazepine, anti-elliptic drugs, or painkillers like pregabalin and all. And good diabetes control, hypertension. So the symptoms will go. Now the question is, suppose somebody has got absence of sensation. There are two types of neuropathy. Positive symptoms like pain, burning, itching, that can be reduced very easily. Negative symptoms like lack of sensation. Somebody has 20 years of diabetes, all the sensations are gone. So in such cases, 100% reversal that the nerves becoming normal is chances are less. Whereas positive symptoms like burning, itching, pain, shooting pain, all that can be reduced by using these drugs, good control of diabetes, you can use B12 also, which will help you in controlling the neuropathy. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have next question from Dr. Chitra. Uh, can we put the patients on statin when they have fatty liver with altered LFT? Yes. Suppose, let us say patient has altered LFT, means HCOT, HCPT are 40 or 60, not more than two and a half times. Lot of patients normally is 30 to 40 OTPT. Even up to 60, 80, nothing to worry. Even if the fatty liver is there, when you put them on statin, and many times your COT, your CPT comes to. But when you start statin and check after three to six weeks, your COT, your CPT, what is 40, 60 comes down to normal, it is good. But somebody's COT, your CPT is 40 or 60, increases to 100. That is the patient where you should reduce or stop statin or most often that is not the case, they get severe cramps. So one of the common side effects of statin is cramps, right? Then that is the one where you have to stop statin. Otherwise, just because you see fatty liver or SUOT, STPT are more than one, one and a half times increase, you don't have to worry. Use statin after four to six weeks, repeat your SUOT, SCPT, that's not going to harm. Again, recent data has shown if there's fatty liver, and if you are using SGL2 inhibitors, the fatty liver can also improve in this situation. Oh, the next question we have from Dr. KG Siddhar. Can we No, you are breaking. Repeat the question, please. Your voice is breaking. Yes, sir. We have next question from Dr. K.G. Siddhai. Can we prevent mm -hmm. all the complications of diabetes? Now, this is a million-dollar question. Many complications can be prevented. You can never say we can prevent in everybody all the complications. Because, as I said, even if we control diabetes, hypertension, lipids, you can reduce the risk. Even if you bring down HbA1c to below 7, the chance of complication is 5%. Microvascular, if it is 8, 25%, 9, 45%, 10, it is 75%. So what we tell them, we can bring down from high risk to low risk. If you say I can prevent all the complications, after five years, he gets heart attack. It may not be related to diabetes. So you tell them 
by treating, we can endure reduce the risk. We cannot guarantee we can prevent all complications because there are genetic factors. Everybody in his family had heart attack between 50 to 60. You may not be able to prevent 100% by using aspirin, antiplatelet drug, lopidotrin, good diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. You are reducing high risk to moderate risk, moderate risk to low risk. That's all. Never say, if you come to me 20 years, I will prevent all the complications. You can reduce the risk. You cannot 100% uh, complication can be prevented, but by good care that you give, good control of diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, you can reduce the risk. That's all what we can see. There are some people, in spite of the best treatment, three times insulin, get into complications. There are people who are totally careless, their diabetes is never controlled, still they get away without any complication 20, 30 years. There's, there are two theories, metabolic theory and genetic theory. We cannot change the genes, but we can at least control your diabetes and other metabolic parameters, reduce the risk. Thank you, sir. The last question we have from Dr. Pallu Raj, hypoglycemia and IHB. Yes. Very important question because always try to prevent hypoglycemia. A hypoglycemia can trigger an ischemic heart disease. Somebody has already got a heart disease. If the blood sugar goes to 60 or 70, he may get a heart attack. And if you again induce hypoglycemia due to excess of drugs like sulfonylurea or insulin, then he can get an angina also. So see that such patients who are prone for heart disease don't keep the blood sugar below 90. Hypoglycemia occurs below 70. That's why if we keep the blood sugar between 90 to 120, it is good. Patient with heart disease, don't try to achieve 6.5. People who are really elderly, 7 to 7.5 is all right. People who are very frail, very thin, cannot walk, don't try to achieve 7.5, even 8 is good enough. So ultimate goal is, an achievable HbA1c without hypoglycemia, patient's quality of life is good. That's what your aim should be. And try to avoid drugs which cause hypoglycemia in elderly patients. If you are using SGLT2, metformin, gliptin, these are the three best drugs. Metformin, SGLT2, gliptin, chance of hypoglycemia is least, whereas sulfonylurea cause more. Again, among insulin, if you are using basal insulin, chance of hypoglycemia is less, if you are using premixed insulin, basal bolus dose, then hypoglycemia chances are more. So, uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for addressing all the queries nicely and for such an interactive session. So, uh, thank you all. Uh, and thank you so much, sir, for taking time out from your busy schedule and taking this uh, session. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. We will catch thank up you. in the next module. Thank you. Thank you. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you, sir.